Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of VGA PR Garage. Today we're working on my 2008 Saab 93 Combine. Where? Where are you? There you are. You don't belong here. So when you're out working in your garage, you always want to make sure you got someone looking over you. And I've got Phineas looking over me. He can he watches me right out there, don't you, Finn? You watch me while I work. You watch me while I work, Finn. You're like, your hands smell bad. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Your hands smell bad. I love you, boy. I love you, boy. All right, let's get back out to work. So you're probably wondering by this point what repair I'm doing. And the repair that I'm doing is replacing this mid-shaft bearing. So on most front wheel drive cars, I think, I mean, for most, for most cars, unless they have an extended axle, most cars have a mid-shaft bearing, which is a shaft that goes outside the transmission, bolts to the engine like this one does, and then the CV shaft attaches to that. Well, there's a bearing in that that helps the shaft ride. This bearing is no good. Um, this setup, the mid shaft and then your CV shaft, is supposed to help prevent torque steer if your CV axles are not the same length, which in this case, it's a front wheel drive car. Transmission is on the driver's side, so there's all that length that has to be made up. So because this is going, I want to replace it. It makes a horrible grinding noise, I'm sure it's hurting fuel economy. Um, and I know I needed this ever since I replaced the engine. Unfortunately, I really can't get in there to show you guys what, which three bolts I'm removing. Um, but when it all comes out, I'll go ahead and show you which three bolts I'm removing. There, once those three bolts are removed, the whole mid shaft and the bearing housing just comes out. There's no stamp ring, nothing. So um, I'll show you when it's all. All right. So hopefully you can hear this. That is not a good sound. Right here, one, two, three. This is the upper mount. These are the two lower mounts. Unfortunately, you can't have the CV shaft connected when you get this out because um, this right, this bolt right here is blocked by the CV shaft. All the bolts are the same length, so nothing too crazy. So we're gonna remove these two caps which look like they might be 10 millis. And they are. One. And two. Really don't want to lose any of this stuff. This should pop up. It should. And it does. So there's that. That's dirty, we're gonna clean that up. And in there, there is a snap ring. These are opening. So, let's hope that these. All right, so one side came loose, another side came loose. And I'm gonna do my trick. If you don't wanna lose a snap ring plier, or the, the snap ring, put a, something over it that's not your hand. I figured that was gonna break because these snap ring pliers absolutely suck. Darn it. It'd actually be easier if that end wasn't on there. I'll be right back, I'm gonna break these ends off. 
like it wants to come up. All right, so both sides are up, which is what I want. No, 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 don't do that. Get in there. There we go. Got it. That sucks. That's got to be cleaned. All right. That sucked a lot. All right. So now, I don't think there's anything on this side. Let me check to see if there is. Watch there be like a snap ring in there. There is a snap ring on the other side. That one looks pretty rusted. Like really badly rusted. But we don't really care about that side because we want it to come off this way. So, I'm gonna see if I can hammer the shaft through. I wonder if I gotta heat it up. Let's check to see if there's any movement. None whatsoever. I'll be back. Oh, that, it's literally not going to come out. So it doesn't even matter about that snap ring. It's all about getting this out this way. And I think I need to clean up that surface. Ugh. So what we have here is there's a large buildup there actually really isn't. But I think heating this up is going to be one of the only ways that this is actually going to come out. So. some movement out of it. We really don't want to be doing that. Let's do this. And we're going to have to heat up again. But yep. Definitely came free a little bit. Back to it.
definitely coming. All right, I gotta swap out the battery and tighten up the vise. All right, so I think we're back at it. I had a socket I was gonna use. I put it right back in, I don't know why. So let's see if we can use this. Unfortunately, I think we need more heat. so nice if I had a, a press, but it's not something that I I often need, so I don't have one. What's going on here? So that just moved, but I guess we're kind of fine with that. I didn't really want it to, but it means it'll make it easier to come out. Alright. There we go. There it is. There is the shaft. There we go. We're going to clean all that up um, to make the, the new one go on easier. So we'll set this aside. So now what we need to do is get that out. And surprisingly, that's friggin' hot, Joshua. Duh! I think that's gonna be the best way for us to try to get that out. And are we hitting up against yeah, we are. Hot, 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 hot tamales! So we're going to open up the vise a little bit more. And that should be enough, I think. We need to open up a little bit more. Off right there. Oop, don't want to get the hammer stuck in, which is what I just did. Oh boy. It's definitely coming. It's just kind of hard. There's not a lot of here. Why don't we try a big, big, a big boy socket. Big. Just enough. All right. Yep, it's coming. All right. It's a coming. So that's hot, so we're going to let that cool down. I'm going to clean the surfaces up of this and the shaft. And for some reason, that battery that's in there is almost dying. So, uh, yeah, I got to plug some stuff in. So let me clean some stuff up. Oh, no, it's not dying. That's the record. Ugh. All right, I'm going to try to give you guys the best view possible. We have our new... Um, what is this? Koi, Koyo bearing... Um, the number on it, which hopefully this will help you guys. I had to wait until this came from Germany. 
It's a Japan bearing. It's a Koyo. And the number that's on it is a 600ARS. Um, I mean, you could probably go to McMaster Car and get a bearing like this. I waited for one like an idiot to come from, what is it called? Sweden? Um, because no one else had these in stock. Um, the other bearing that came out, I don't think that there's any... Yeah, I'm looking at it and there's no... I don't see any writing on it, anything significant. It's not that it melted off. There's just nothing on it. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Hopefully it'll help me out if I ever have to do it again. Um, so I have the bearing seated on the, seated on the vise with the inner race, the inner um, on the sides because we don't want to have the outer race because we're gonna we're gonna be pushing through. So I've cleaned up the shaft. <laughs> Always make sure your shaft is clean before insertion. It's important. And now what I'm going to do is just apply a small amount of grease to the shaft. This is just some silicone paste. And now we're going to put it in. And I haven't, there's no need to take that um, other clamp out, um, the C-clip, because that'll be what the, the bearing sits up against. I have a rubber mallet. I'm just tapping that down. And that's seated. Wow, that was nice. Woo! And now, ooh, that sounds so good. It sounds so good. It just sounds so good. I'm super happy about that. I mean, honestly, what we could do at this point is even take that snap, that ugly snap ring and put that in. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's wrap the shaft. I think I might have messed this entire thing up. Because, no I didn't, because what we're going to do is then this whole thing will go through here, like so. And now what we'll do is we'll take some lube, we'll put some luby dube in here. And there actually is, oh, or at least I thought there was, there isn't, but it's fine, all right. Take this, that right there, take the mallet, and try to make it go in as even as possible. There we go, and it dropped right in. That is right where it needs to be. So now we're gonna take that snap ring that I need to clean off. I'm so happy. There won't be that horrible roar anymore while I'm driving. Cleaning this snap ring off. I can tell you right now, this is not going to be fun. I need open pliers. These are closed. What am I doing? So now we'll take that screwdriver. Push. Push this down with a screwdriver. It should eventually snap into place. And something tells me that we are not where we need to be. We need to go in deeper because I don't see that that ring. So I need to 
pull that snap ring out. Because I don't see the groove. So we are not, yeah, we're not all the way in. So let that come out. There we go. This back up here. Less. Do some more tapping. So now let's take that snap ring because now I can see that lip. out now we can push it in its groove there we go that is in the groove all the way around it's exactly what we want now we can take this put it through like so I just took the mallet got a little bit too there we go there it is nice and seated now to save everything you can add a little bit more grease here We've got this that I need to clean up a little bit. So I'm pretty sure that when you look up the image, the breakout diagram of this, this is what they call the seal. Um, it all, but if you have the original one, it has a little sob written right there. And I want to make sure that when whoever comes back in here again, me at some point, that they'll see the word sob hanging out up there. Um, so I'm going to have that facing the upside. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to Loctite these. Um, because it would suck if these came undone. I think it would allow for movement of that bearing, which I don't want. And there we go. Put one in there. Just always start it by hand first. There we go. We got our impact gun with a 10 millimeter on one and forward. With a two, just for good measure. All right, so that's how you put together the shaft. Let's, let's take a listen to it. Oh. Oh, hopefully you don't hear the fan, but no noise. So let's go ahead and get this installed back in the car. So I'm not too sure how much you're gonna be able to see this, but you wanna make sure that the shaft that goes into the transmission is clean. This, um, I was gonna say, it doesn't really click in. Um, all you're gonna do is just follow the path in through and put it in to the transmission. Try not to damage your transmission seal. Darn it. 
and there we go. I've got Loctite on these bolts that hold the mid shaft bearing in. Always want to start them by hand first. One up top. Then we got one really far in there. Where are you? I think I'm gonna be in your way. Start on my hand. That's definitely started. And of course, that one fell out. Why? Why else? Why wouldn't it have? Come here. This is a lot easier if, like, you're under the car and doing it. But um, I don't want to get under the car to do it. I really don't. Go. There we go. I got the one up top. All right. Now we're going to cinch it down with this. We got the one back in here. All right, you're just gonna see my back. So I'm gonna tighten these up and then we'll get back to it. All right, so now that we have the intermediate shaft in, we can go ahead and take our CV shaft and install that. And that will just go into the intermediate shaft, tap it in. One second. Now, because of the type of shaft this is, I'm using a rubber mallet. You don't want to use a hammer on this because the threads go all the way to the end. Are you in? No, you're not in yet. Stay with your brother in the back. You trust Finn too much. Well, he's gonna come, come back here with your brother. All right, so let's put a nut on it. 
Finn. Finn. All right. So now we're going to take a real hammer. And I think we got it. Go back in there and check. And the answer is no, we did not get it. So we go at it some more. No, it is being difficult. What's going on here? There we go. All right, shaft is in. Let's take that nut off. And we're gonna put put, put some uh, lube on this. Let me grab some. What are you doing, boy? Put some lube here. Come on, come in with your brother. Lube on this. Now we're going to at the same time put the shaft inside the knuckle. You can hear Pepper Jack. Shaft inside the knuckle. Bring this down. And try to bring it all in at once. Hey Finn. You like he likes the garage. It reminds him of day one. <laughs> he really likes being in here. So, I'm sure you guys are wondering what that snorting is. <laughs> PJ! PJ! Get him! Go get your dad! What are you doing, PJ? Go get your dad! What are you doing? What are you doing, Pepper Jack? What are you doing, Pepper Jack? Go get your dad! What are you doing? What are you doing? Go get daddy! Hurry! <clears throat> He's running! Go get him! <laughs> then what are you doing, Finn? Here he comes, here he comes! Go get daddy! Oh, he's going to the side, babe. He's looking for you. Get him! Oh, Go get daddy! Pepper Jack! Go get daddy! Pepper Jack! <laughs> he only wants that food. And where's Finn? Probably sniffing something. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so that's how you replace a mid-shaft bearing on a 2003 to 2000, I want to say 10, um, Saab 9.3. I'm sure this goes for other General Motors vehicles. Um, but um, yeah, this is that's how you do it. Um, if you guys like this video, thumbs up, didn't thumbs down, you know, down there, blee bloops. Um, go ahead and do that. I hope you enjoyed seeing PJ the pig and uh, Phineas the cat. Um, I'm sure you'll start seeing them more. I'm going to start showing a little bit more of me besides this. Well, I'm not going to show my face, but, you know, a little bit of more of what I do outside of this. Um, but, yeah, clear your tools off, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.